What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guy Cody here. I wanted to talk about, in lieu of the Indianapolis Colts not renewing the contract, of defensive line coach Nate Ollie. wanted to talk about some potential options for the Indianapolis Colts and potential guys they could bring in to fill that vacant role. You know, this is an article and an idea that was brought up by Zach Hicks over there at horseshoehuddle.com, was trying to get Zach on, and we just weren't able to settle on a time. So I'll kind of read some of the candidates, read some of that. I won't go into all the detail because Zach does a great job in going into some of those details, but just to give you an idea of some guys who might be up to the task for the Indianapolis Colts, some guys the Colts might be looking at based off of you know some of the you know different ties to Shane Steichen, Gus Bradley, things of that nature. And also just potential guys out there that have been productive and have a good track record as well. So these are the five guys that Zach has on his list. And there are some other candidates he lists as well that I'll throw out there. Um, Some of the guys that are, you know, potential candidates that didn't make his list but are still dark horses for him. Uh, Clint Hurt, he was a former Seattle Seahawks defensive coordinator. Jay Rogers, um, he was a former a defensive line coach for the Chargers and run game coordinator as well. Um, A guy who was a personal trainer of guys like Quiddy Pay, Samson Ebukam, and Dio Adango, Eddie McGilvra. Uh, Those are three guys that he lists as potential candidates for Indianapolis. Uh, A couple other guys here that you could point to for, you know, guys that would fill that opening. First guy here, uh, former defensive line coach of the Washington Commanders, Jeff Zagonia. So he is a guy that is a local guy from Purdue. So he knows, you know, Indiana extremely well. And he actually played for Purdue as a player as well, which is interesting. Um, he, he did play for the Colts back in 1998, which I do find interesting. As of recent, in terms of coaching, he spent time with the Washington Commanders. Um, he also spent time in the 49ers before that with the 49ers. So obviously he has time where he spent overlapped with the Forrest Buckner as well. So that potentially could be a guy, you know, he's worked with players like Chase Young. He's worked with Montez Sweat. And so he knows how to develop guys. He knows how you know, what it looks like to have that top-end talent, what to look for when it comes to defensive linemen, and also his time in San Francisco certainly helped in that department as well. And then obviously his ties to Indiana, it makes a whole lot of sense there for Indianapolis to go his route. I'm a guy that Shane Steichen knows extremely well, Tracy Rocker. Um, Right now, currently, the Philadelphia defensive line coach, but maybe this is one where Shane Steichen, with how he's been tied, you know, to him being in a couple of years when he was in Philly, um, could that be potentially something um, where he and and also when you know he was with Jim Bob Cooter as well. So there is a lot of overlap between Steichen, between Jim Gop, Bob Cooter, and Tracy Rocker. So that could make a lot of sense. You know, he's had some experience a little bit everywhere. Some at the NFL level, some at the collegiate level at Auburn, and you know he was also. The deep, you know, he was also one of the guys that you you've seen how good Philly's been at getting after the passer the last couple of years, and you see really how their defensive line created havoc all year long, especially in 2022. And so, could that connection with Steichen make a lot of sense for Rocker to come to Indianapolis potentially? So that's another guy that you could throw in there. Philly defensive line coach, had a little bit of experience at the collegiate level and also at the NFL level with ties to both Shane Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter. Um, Another guy here um, that you could throw in there, this guy's the first assistant coach, assistant defensive line coach that you could throw out there. But maybe he's a guy that you look at, you know, the team that he's been on and say, hey, maybe he's had a huge part in kind of the success of the San Francisco 49ers. That's Daryl Tapp. This guy obviously doesn't – he probably has the least connections out of all of the candidates. But, I mean, you look at the body of work the 49ers have put together. You look at how he has been, you know, a key part of that. He's been a 12-year – he played in the NFL for 12 years. So he knows how, you know, to – he knows, you know, he can relate to players on a certain level. Um, you know, he, he's he been with the 49ers, so he's seen a lot of good pass rushers. He's helped develop different guys as well. And obviously, the 49ers defensive line speaks for itself. So could Tap potentially be looking to take, instead of just an assistant role, 
going into more of, you know, a full time taking the room and being that guy and being that voice. And even though he doesn't necessarily have a ton of, you know, uh, of experience and a ton of connections with this Colts defensive staff and really this Colts team in general. I mean, he was actually a player, ironically enough, under Gus Bradley all the way back in 2009 on the Seattle Seahawks, um, which is interesting. So he's the, probably the youngest guy with the least amount of experience here. But could the Colts take a swing at a young guy that, you know, has a lot of potential and could really get you know, a lot out of this defensive line, being a former player and being able to connect with them as well. Um, he's also had some connections with Samson Ebukam as well in the past, being with the San Francisco 49ers. Remember, Ebukam was with the Niners for a number of years. So that is something that is a connection with a player. So that could that potentially make a lot of sense there for Indianapolis. Moving on to the last two guys, the number two candidate for Zach that he had was Todd Wash, who currently right now sits as the Panthers defensive line coach. He's probably one of the more well-known names out of potential candidates for the Colts in terms of you know the defensive line goes. And he obviously has connections with Gus Bradley in Jacksonville. You know, he served different roles under Bradley, so Bradley knows him extremely well. And he was actually interesting enough. Wash was the defensive coordinator for the Jaguars when they went to the ASC championship back in 2018 where Jacksonville obviously it was Saxonville for a reason. They got after the quarterback at a very, very high rate. Gus Bradley has that connection. Also, you know, you look at what he's been able to do as of recent with a guy like Derek Brown and how he's been able to help him ascend into one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. And, hey, you know, Brian Burns has to be a free agent. Maybe there's a connection there where if the Colts were to go this route, they'd look to add a guy like Burns in the offseason because there is that familiar connection there. Um, and also just the fact that Wash and also Gus Bradley just have that tight connection. They're very close. That would make a whole lot of sense. You know, one of the bigger names on the market, potentially for Indianapolis, it would make a lot of sense from a, you know, familiarity standpoint and also, you know, just overall fit for the Indianapolis Colts defense because he knows what Gus Bradley wants to do. He knows how the Gus Bradley likes his defense go, and he has a good track record as well. So Wash is definitely a top guy, a top candidate here. But the one guy that Zach has above the rest was a guy who took over last year for Brandon Staley. That's Giff Smith. He was the interim head coach for the L.A. Chargers. You know, He's been a guy that's served in just different positions with the Chargers for the past eight years. Um, you know, He's a guy that he has ties to both Bradley and Shane Steichen because he did work alongside them in 2016, uh, from 2016 to 2020. He's been more previously working, you know, as a linebacker slash defensive line coach over the last couple of years. Um, but he's been able to help develop guys like Joey Bosa, different guys like that. And, and so he is definitely one of the top candidates, if not the top candidate for the Indianapolis Colts. And obviously the Colts felt like with Nate Ali, um, they just weren't getting that full connection that they needed to get, right? So I'm um, bringing in one of the top guys here, one of these top guys with the ties and the connections they have to both Shane Steichen and or Gus Bradley. I think it makes a lot of sense for any of these names for Indianapolis. Those are some big names um, that were thrown out there by Zach. Um, I'm curious what you guys think. Are there any other guys that you would say, I want the Indianapolis Colts to pursue this guy? For the defensive line position, obviously the Colts go internal and, and hire a guy like Matt Rack, who is the right now the assistant defensive line coach. I know Brenton Buckner is a former Jaguars defensive line coach. He's a guy that's been thrown out there as well. So there is a ton of guys, you know, um, that could potentially make sense for the Indianapolis Colts trying to fill this vacant position. But I'm curious for you guys. Out of all these names, does one stand out to you? And by the way, go check out Zach's article. He does even more depth and talks about even more um, stuff around these different candidates. So be sure to go check that out. But let me know your thoughts on the potential candidates for the Indianapolis Colts defensive line position. Other than that, that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. And as always, guys, go Colts. Yeah.